Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode of Never Rider. Today we have a doctor in the house and he's a wizard of a scalpel. And his name is? Uh, my name is Boyjik Singh. Okay. So Boyjik Singh, tell us, what's your journey? Why did you become a surgeon? What was it like on the route to becoming a surgeon? Nice to meet you, Simon. I mean, it's quite interesting, firstly, to discover about your podcast. And, well, it's kind of a thrilling experience, you know, like you said. So I think surgery, it was during my fourth year of medical school when I realized how fascinating, like, you know, the inside of a human body can be. Like, previously, of course, when people go to uni and medical school, they see cadavers and all. But when you operate on a live body, how magnificent and beautiful the human body can be inside. Uh, like, lots of organs, bones, blood all tissues and everything of course some people say that blood is scary but i think that's what blood can never be scary because that's what fills us up that's an integral part that's inside the body the other thing is the adrenaline the thrill the satisfaction that i get in surgery i don't think i, I would have ever got in any other branch of medicine okay. also and one of the key reasons why i prefer to do orthopedic surgery is because you know this is a kind of surgery that decides whether a person will move or not, a person will walk or not, a person can use their, her hand uh, or not in the future. So it's like my treatment is very much dependent on how a person does well for the rest of their life when they have an injury or something. And that way I think it's one of the most vital branches that we live in for. And the other thing is whatever you do in orthopedics, like you get results. Sometimes it takes time, but sometimes it's quickly. So I think that way I get to feel that I'm doing some good to the society maybe. Okay. What have you learned about the industry that you wish you knew when you had started? The best and the worst part about this profession is you never stop learning. Okay. There's no end to it. I mean, even today, I'm, let's say I'm, I'm 27 years old. When I become, if I'm practicing as a surgeon, even when I'm 67, I'll, I'll keep learning. The new techniques, the new themes, the new studies, the everything, uh, new research, new developments, you know, this always evolving. So, so learning is always a never ending process for I think any person who's a surgeon or a physician, like in the medicine profession. Talking about le always learning, what, how has the industry changed since you started to where you are now? Yes, this is a very interesting question, you know, like give you uh, give you two examples, like for basically when I started my medical studies, I was in India. Now, now that I have come to the UK, so I have seen a gross difference between two countries and how the healthcare system, how the industry has evolved over the years. I mean, if you look back into India, which was ruled by this country, the Great Britain, for more than 200 years, all the medical values and all the medical practice principles were set by them. So it was somewhat similar. But over the years after the globalization and now the medical industry is being by owned by corporates and private markets, India is such a structure that the common people are in such a mental state that they just crave for that privatization and corporate usage of hospitals. Whereas when I come to the NHS, I see it's such a social structure. I mean, the NHS by rule and by law, it provides for all the uh, people of England, irrespective of their any status, financial, religious, their social status whatsoever. The, so I have learned from traveling across two countries is this, how the value of human life uh, is determined, uh, given in India and given in UK. So I think that's one of the interesting things that I've discovered over industry. And slowly I've, I can see like there's an uprising of this private medical insurance across many countries. I don't know, like I mean with democratic and bureaucratic insufficiencies, how it, uh, both the countries are going to face with an ever increasing population. But I think health and social care, the industry, I mean, whatever what is happening i think the value of human life shouldn't be you know undermined with new age onset of corporate or uh, private principles okay what can india learn from england and what can Eng england learn from india well, I think India has a huge share of learning transcended and inherited to us by the Britishers. Like, we got the railways, we got the English language, we got the Indian law, which was uh, f first aided by the courts that were made by the Britishers. I think India is now in a situation where it has got a lot and it's now willing to return or like willing to, you know, help out and give back more. And the UK, I mean, and same thing with the United Kingdom. I mean, you know, previously there were not so immigrants from India coming to the UK, but now you have have two-thirds of the NHS doctors who are Asians and particularly Indians. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, all across the UK, like England, Scotland, and Wales. So I think what the UK can learn is uh, one thing that I felt while working out here or like living out here is maybe it's high time the United Kingdom starts adopting uh, the Indian cultures of maybe togetherness, like a joint family, like staying together. Like couple of things like this place or what I feel is very isolated and then like every people are on their own I think that's what constitutes major problem for having some depressions low mood and this thing because you don't like to enjoy your family once you're 18 you have to step out of life step out of home find your own earning get your own accommodation and this thing so I think this way there's a joint family system or like the togetherness system that I mean it can doesn't need it could be a huge joint family of course but then parents living with the kids and then sometimes the living with the family together i think this is what uk can definitely learn from india you've been an interesting interview my last question is what does the future hold for you well you know the best thing of the future is there are a couple of things on this aspect firstly none of us know what the future holds and lastly if i were to end i would quote bob dylan which says life is what happens to you while you plan something else <laughs> i like that i like that Well, thanks a lot for that. Thanks, Simon. Thanks so much. And we wish you well. Ah, th- you too. It's been great meeting you. We hope that episode enhanced your life. We post an interview every day, as well as vlogging on our social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to get our latest episode.